welcome to Significant TV, where we feature significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and with me today in the studio is Tavis Dockwiller, principal of Viridian Landscape Studios. Tavis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Fran. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So, you know, you do have a significant story in terms of starting out as an entrepreneur. I'd love for you to share it with all of us. And I would love to share it. I was 34, mm -hmm. and I was working at a very wonderful company that was well known in my field. And my boss, who had founded that company, wanted to start another company, and he invited me wow. to start that second company. And I had about a moment's hesitation where I called home, called my family, called my mom and dad, um, called my, my beau, and said, boy, I have this opportunity. And they said, how could you not? Mm. And when I had to give my notice, even one of the principals from that firm I was working for said, how could you not? Mm. This is a great opportunity to go off and do something really fun. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to, my partner wanted to start another company because he felt like he wasn't working on the projects anymore because we had a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so our idea was we really wanted to be involved in our built work. Share that, share that. Built, you're using some terms, your project, <laughs> built work. Take us back a little bit and then bring us into... Sure. Well, I'm a landscape architect, as you know, mm -hmm. and my firm is Viridian Landscape Studio, and we help clients, as diverse variety of clients, everyone from Arboreta through institutions, through not-for-profits, to plan mm -hmm. and make the design drawings for and then work through construction administration for projects that they want to build. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do as landscape architects. So we're making uh, outdoor spaces. Sometimes we're calling them fresh air places mm -hmm. for people because everyone needs beautiful places to go outside. Mm -hmm. and, and what we say at Viridian is we heal ecological systems while making beautiful places for people. Heal ecological systems while making beautiful places for people. Give me an example. I mean, I know a lot about you, but not everyone <laughs> does. So give me an example. I will give you an example. We worked to design the site work for the children's zoo at the Philadelphia Zoo. And that's a client we love mm -hmm. because their mission meshes very well with ours. And that's what we love when clients have a mission that meshes. So they're a conservation organization, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to get a mes message out to people of connecting people to the environment, connecting them to animals, because they feel that if people make connections to the environment and animals, then the world gets preserved and enhanced mm -hmm. and understood the natural world. So when we worked with them at the zoo, we were very specific about designing native ecosystems of Pennsylvania so people can see them and know what they are and know what they should be looking for out in their environments. Okay, so again, I'm gonna break it down. Native ecosystems, meaning plants and trees and shrubbery that reflects what that animal might be familiar with and exactly. or sort of, you explain it. You. Well, that's, that's really what it is. It's when we talk about native ecosystems, we're looking at what has evolved in whatever place we're in over the thousands of years of evolution because all the plants and animals that live there need those things that they've evolved with to live successfully. Mm -hmm. And we get concerned as landscape architects because we see due to rapid industrialization, lots of changes to the landscape that are very quick mm -hmm. and environmental degradation. So we're really concerned with, with um, helping people to understand, not replicating what we think might have been there okay. 400 years ago, okay. Okay. but we call it putting it on an ecological trajectory. We're trying to get soils, water, and vegetation to all work together the way they used to mm -hmm. so that we keep our biodiversity. So you get to play in the dirt, yes. play in the water. <laughs> That's the simple way of saying it. <laughs> so if someone wanted to go in that field, how would they go about becoming a landscape architect? 
they would go to university for it. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. I went to Penn State, but there are lots of great programs out there. UPenn mm -hmm. has one. Temple has one in our mm -hmm. area. There are programs across the country. And I, I liked it. When I was in high school, I was trying to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. And my mom knew about landscape architecture, which lots of people don't. And she said, I think this would be great because it blends science and art and nature oh, together. Cool. And that's exactly what it does. Science, art, and nature. So the Children's Zoo is an example. Um, that space. What are some other examples that you're really proud of that you and your team have made a difference not only for the client but for their clients, for their visitors? I'm very proud of our work for a George School up in Newtown. We were part of the team for building a new library and George School had decided with our help through a site master plan to try to figure out how their campus might look a little different and not just be mown lawn and large trees, which really mm -hmm. comes from um, a different sort of aesthetic and talks a lot about how um, we used to show wealth if we could care for our land by putting a couple of sheep on it and we didn't have to keep it in production. We were very wealthy, but mm -hmm. we need to really think differently about what the land means to clean water and clean air. So George School was very interested and they were going to build a new library and it was on an intermittent waterway. So it's, it's a stream that really is only there in the spring. Oh, okay. okay. And so we helped them think about how we could restore that channel and how we could put the library into a living ecology and really a very beautiful landscape. Mm. So when people went to learn, they would sit within nature and learn within nature. How cool. Yeah. So that really goes <laughs> back to that science, design, art, nature. I mean, you're in a very creative space, very creative. You brought with you an award, uh, a poster of an award. Tell us about that award. Well, this award it is, <coughs> this is, I wrote a book. I was one of five fellows to write a book for the city of New York. It's called High Performance Landscape Guidelines, um, 21st Century Parks for New York City. We did it in partnership with the Design Trust for Public Space and the New York City Park System because they're trying to figure out how parks can be more sustainable. And they have a goal, lots of cities have goals now, that a park by 2030, everyone will have a park within a 10 minute walk. Wow. Of wherever oh, they are. It's powerful. It's great, it's amazing. And so we wrote these, these guidelines and it came um, at, at a funny time in my life. Um, my partner was retiring and my husband died and I got this commission to help to write the book and I thought well maybe you know maybe I shouldn't do it because I'm not feeling so great mm -hmm. and then I thought well this is my passion mm -hmm. maybe this would be a way to keep engaged right. so right. over I think 18 months we we wrote the book and I didn't think a whole lot really about it and um, it's <laughs> It's sort of making these incredible changes for New York, and then we got this award Ooh. from the Municipal Art Society of New York that has a goal of preserving the past while looking to the future, and it was um, a shock <laughs> that we got this really big award for for putting our expertise into into something that other people could use. Right, which is powerful. I mean, so you're now helping to document what will be a movement going forward and 2030 R is right. not that <laughs> far away no no it's, it's not that far away yes it's very close now mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. um, it, it it you know i think when you you go along in business and you have a passion for your business you you just do it because you think it should be done mm -hmm. and as a business owner you don't always get a lot of recognition mm -hmm. and you're sort of just doing your thing and maybe it doesn't make a difference and then you get something like this and you think wow that made a little difference <laughs> yeah, it, it did and that's one of the things that um, you know when I talk with entrepreneurs it's so interesting to see the intersection of passion and purpose um, and you shared through some of the work you've done, how they've intersected. How else, when you think about your business, and also when you think forward, 
Where do you see your business going? Well, I'd like my business to grow a little bit more, have a few mm -hmm. more people. Um, I just turned 50. Woohoo! Oh. Welcome to the club. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a little ahead of you, but welcome to the club anyway. Thank you. A lot of people <laughs> say it's very nice in the club. Yes. Um, so I, you know, while I look forward to realize I, I, I maybe have you know a particular amount of time to 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 do more work. I feel like I'm I'm finally at a place in my business mm -hmm. where people are more interested in what we have to say and what we're doing and I I think we're getting a lot of clients who really act as partners for us mm -hmm. and Powerful. so when we work with an institution and lots of institutions are looking forward at how to treat the earth we make a very good engagement to that and mm -hmm. and through that I think we can help ourselves grow and help institutions grow and change and present something really different in how we've treated the land. I'd love for you as we wrap up to sort of focus on that. I mean one of the things that I ask almost every guest is when you focus your energy for action, what are the significant results that happen in your world and also in our world? Well, and that's what, that's what we say. That's almost mm -hmm. our tagline. Mm -hmm. We heal ecological systems and make beautiful places for people. People need places to go outside, to play, mm. to learn, to study. Mm -hmm. We see more and more people becoming insular and staying inside, but we also see people understanding that they have to get back outside. Mm. Companies are trying to do that more for their employees. It's really a, it's a total health picture. It is. Brand. It is. It's it's our physical health, it's the health of our world. Mm -hmm. We're all connected. We're all connected. We're all connected. <laughs> Very exciting. Oh, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Ah, my <laughs> pleasure, my pleasure. Great smile. Well, I wanted to say thank you to Tavis Dockwiller, principal of Viridian Landscape Studios, and thank you for watching Significant TV, Significant Stories by Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil. Thank you. <laughs>